Some of you may know me on YouTube as the extremely funny guy that makes YouTube videos in a very funny way, but I have many more talents than that, and one of those talents is my ability to draw pictures. Now, I am no master at imaginary calligraphy, but I've been drawing quite a lot of pictures over the years, and I would say I've gotten pretty good at it. So today, I decided to become an art critic for this video, and what better topic to talk about than Attack on Titan, the series that has been carrying my view count for the last few months. However, if you want to see some of my other artwork, you can follow me on Twitter. Not only do I post art there, but I also post some very comedic zingers as well that you can steal if you ever wanted to do some stand-up comedy and get a couple laughs. But before I start, I just wanted to put out some rules. One is that I will only be talking about the Attack on Titan manga and not the anime. And two, I will only be keeping the story implications to a minimal. In this video, I'll just be talking about the Attack on Titan art style and its highs and lows. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Attack on Titan obviously prides itself in being very realistic compared to other manga which obviously is to boost the believability of the world. For example, the functionings of the wall and the 3D maneuver gear is a very spot on and very logical addition to the Attack on Titan world. And it makes sense because if Titans attack the world, you build walls. If Titans have weaknesses, you build machines to stop them. But one of the problems that I've had with the manga, especially at the beginning, is the human shape and overall design. Attack on Titan seems to have a very rough and sketchy art style with a lot of lines, and if the proportions of the characters look odd, the whole thing just ends up looking very strange. One of the best examples I have is that the main three characters seem to have very odd shapes when they're younger. The proportion of their heads to their bodies isn't very cohesive and lacks a sense of proper consistency to them. The sketchy art style also seems to amplify this weirdness and in my opinion makes it so that the character's movement and positioning is also very stiff and awkward and sometimes doesn't match the background at all. The characters seem to also lack focus in their eyes and facial structure because of the lack of detail and shadows along with the inconsistency of their head shapes due to this sketchy art style. Now, I'm not saying that this sketchy art style is a bad art style. There are many mangas that use this type of artwork to great success. One of the best examples I can come up with is Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi, a horror manga. Made of entirely line art, it has a very unique and visually pleasing art style with a very subtle backdrop of uncertainty which adds to the theme. But the reason that this manga's art style works is that Oshimi is a transcendent artist that is able to mimic the human face to grotesque haunting beauty. He's able to draw certain quirks of the human face to incredible subtlety including all kinds of subtle emotions. So a manga with a scruffy art style is definitely possible, but how do you fix the lack of consistency in Attack on Titan's style, especially early on? Well, there's always ways to improve. One suggestion I would make is to study the human anatomy and apply that to your artwork. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but practice makes perfect. And if you see the improvements that Isayama made over the years, you'll know that that is true. However, some of you may be saying that this is merely a stylistic choice, which is a valid argument, but if the goal of the art in the series is to show the realism of the world you portray, bad body proportions is not going to help you which is definitely the case in Early Attack on Titan. I think the character design in the beginning of the series is incredibly generic and in turn makes the first couple of arcs visually bland and uninteresting to follow. That's why this is one of the few series where I actually prefer the anime over the manga. But there's a certain design in the series that doesn't seem generic even at the beginning, and that is the Titans. Regardless of lackluster character formations, the biggest selling point of AOT is the Titans and frankly, it is nailed brilliantly. The sketch and scuffed art style of Isayama actually does the Titans a huge boost and it makes them much more menacing and otherworldly while keeping the human shell intact. As I was researching this portion of the video, I was thinking about how Isayama could have made such disgusting and demented looking characters, and I recalled a few months ago when I decided to draw a realistic human face with proper features. At the time I'd never done this before because I usually only draw cartoons so I thought it would be fun, but halfway through drawing it I realized how demented the picture looked. I looked at the picture and said, okay, the nose seems pretty normal, the eyes may have a little bit of mascara but it's a normal shaped eye, and the lips, yeah it's a little weird but the lips are pretty okay I guess. 
So why is it that the person that I drew looked like an unenthused hooker giving me my first blowjob, and it hit me like a leprechaun in Viagra? This must have been a very similar process to how Isayama drew a titan. He may have been trying to draw a pretty girl in class, and it may have ended up looking like Voldemort without a nose. I thought to myself, what a genius he is, and what a genius I am for being able to replicate his thought process. But anyway, this is how I believe the titans were drawn, albeit with more distortion and with a lot more shading and line work. And I guess that's kind of the appeal of the titans in this series for me, because they look absolutely absurd and deranged, coming in all shapes and sizes. I guess that's why a lot of the things that didn't end up working in his character designs ended up working here. There's no need to have proper dimensions when he can make them all degenerates. Literally. However, AOT is a series that ran for 12 years and the improvement that it has made artistically is quite a marvel. I've never considered Isayama to be overwhelmingly gifted with natural talent, but the improvement that has been made is quite an amazing thing to see. The lack of focus in the character design and proportions cleans itself up quite nicely later on in the manga, and the use of shading and other minimal details to differentiate the characters also has tremendously improved. Another thing is backgrounds. Backgrounds are crucial in series where world building is incredibly important and it was lackluster at the beginning but now it is absolutely breathtaking. The overall detail that went into the last few arcs have been absolutely insane and has led to some of the best paneling I've ever seen from the series. There's also a slow descent from genericness to Isayama building up his own style as the manga progresses. As I said before, the art felt a bit generic in the beginning but now, characters seem to have that AOT feel to them that wasn't present before. One of the most notable examples is the eye shape, which became more and more defined as the chapters went on. Before it was a simple retina with a circle around it, but now there is much more depth, shadow, sparkles in the eye, and different shapes of eyes that is much more unique to the AOT series. I'm not sure if this is due to the anime having a much more distinct design from the beginning and that being translated to the manga, but by the end of the series you could clearly tell that this was Attack on Titan. However, there are certain things that I would have liked to see improve a bit more. One of the things is the lack of differentiation between the characters. Now, although this has improved as the series went on, I had trouble differentiating between different side characters. When there were so many new characters being introduced in the Marley arc, I just couldn't be asked to keep up with so many people, especially with so many of them having very similar key features. What do I mean by key features, you ask? Well, just look at Goku's hair. That's a key feature of him that we will always remember him for, even if he was hidden under a silhouette. You can't really do that with AOT characters because they're supposed to be realistic and whatnot, and I get that, but sometimes the lack of unique character design kind of hurts the readability of the manga, especially since it's in black and white. Another thing is the facial structure and the stiffness of the characters. I just felt that some of the emotions that the characters feel are still a bit confusing and awkward even at the end of the series. I don't know why, but these characters all seem to have this grim look on their face even when they're smiling. I don't know if that's an art thing or a pet peeve thing, but it's just something that I've noticed that is just really weird. But that's pretty much all of the critique that I have for the art of the series. Would I say that the manga is absolutely one of the best artwork I've ever seen? No, of course not, but there are still things that are really interesting to look at when dissecting the art of the series. But maybe this is also a silver lining looking at the improvements that Isayama has made since his early 20s until now, and maybe that is an inspiration some of you may share when doing your own series as well. It is clear that Isayama is no prodigy when it comes to artistic ability, but art is only half of what it takes to make a good manga series. And it also shows that even one of the greatest and most successful mangas of all time is made not by a prodigy demon, but an artist trying to find his own voice.